Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Ian Flint, international, world-renowned graphene expert from Alcora Advanced Materials. How are you today, Dr. Flint? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. And so, Dr. Flint, you're currently sitting in your graphene lab. Can you tell us about where you're at right now and, and what's happening? Well, we are currently producing graphene right now. Uh, at the moment, we're producing graphene uh, for three different clients. And um, as you can see by the lab itself, this is where we make it. Um, we can produce about 100 grams a week or in, in about that area. Dr. Flynn, I'm not certain that everyone is aware of how far Alcora has come, come with graphene because you've been busy in the lab. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you've been, you know, what's happened over, say, the last quarter and maybe what's happening in the upcoming next quarter? Well, in the last quarter, we have, so we've, been, we've been producing graphene. We are currently working on um, a research program with, with NRC, which is the National Research Council, on, uh, on coatings, which is uh, one of the applications that we're working on. Um, that will be ongoing in the next few months. And we are also working on putting together a graphene research facility in China. All right. Well... Graphene right now, for instance, in our trending section of Investor Intel, our number one, number three, and number five most read articles right now are on graphene and what's happening out there. Can you tell us a little bit more about your research deal? Um, Coatings is, is one of the least costly applications to develop. And it has, what I mean by that is you don't need a lot of graphene to do it. Therefore, the final product isn't going to be that cost effective costly, and it can have a really big impact and have very large markets. Uh, so it's kind of the low-hanging fruit in terms of the, the, um, the graphene space, um, and we have the production capability of right now supplying uh, coatings manufacturers. So we are working closely with coatings manufacturers in order to basically produce various coatings. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, Dr. Flint, that the coating industry is, of course, a, a $10 billion plus uh, market cap. Can you tell us a little bit more, maybe some more scientific information on how graphene is used? Well, you're looking at the properties of graphene and imparting that to the surface that you're coating it with. So you've got chemical resistance, which means that you can fight things like uh, rust or other kinds of chemical reactions that it could occur. It's extremely hydrophobic, which means things won't attach to it. So it can be used as anti-fouling for ships. Um, the research that's been done so far suggests that if you coat a boat or a ship with graphene, you can reduce its drag by 20 to 25 percent. That's the fuel efficiency for, for freighters and things like that. Graphene imparts anti-fog. Same with that, the hydrophobic part of it, which means you could coat glass with it, no fog, which, you know, that would be of interest to automakers, but it also has other implications too, which most people don't think about, which is on airplanes. It's a natural de-icing substance, which means you wouldn't have to de-ice your airplane. So there's a lot of different things there. Also, you could coat a car, not only would it give it resistance against chemical attacks, but it would also reduce the drag as you're driving. We're also doing a little bit of research on tires. It's not coatings, but we're, while we're talking about drag, we can talk about that. But if you put graphene in tires, for example, you can reduce the what's called rolling resistance of your car by a significant amount, meaning you would also reduce the fuel consumption in your car. There's a lot of applications to graphene that are, are fairly close to being real. We just need to have the graphene in a uh, production mode and consistent quality, which is what we're working on. Okay, so Alcora Advanced Materials presently has a facility that is producing. You have three clients already. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we might want to expect next? Well, what we are doing, we work with clients in order to sort of be partners in the application. We don't sell a lot of graphene. What we are doing is we are developing the applications to in order to sell the final products. That's what we are doing. 
So that in over the next 18 months, we will be concentrating mostly on coating, but we will also be getting in probably into rubber products and things like that as well. Okay, that's very interesting. So what you're telling me is that Alcora is really um, kind of the technology applications for graphene. You're at the forefront in this particular sector. Is that what you're focused on? That's correct. Dr. Flint, a lot of people feel that graphene technology applications are too far in the future for them to be economical for investing in presently. Can you give us your insight into this opinion? Yeah, I can understand it. Um, it's based on a lot of fake news, um, but it's also based on a lot of fake graphene. Um, the industry has had a huge problem in the past of companies claiming to produce graphene that have never produced graphene. What they have produced is what now is called graphite nanoplatelets, which is essentially a failed graphene. Um, they're so value, very valuable products, but if you're trying to make something out of graphene and you're not using graphene, you're not going to succeed. That's why I alluded to earlier, there's a quality control issue. Um, once the real graphene is out there, the research is actually moving along fairly quickly. So that, yes, I can see where people see their problems, and those problems are real, but it's easily addressed. We just produce graphene, and we will get there. So it, how, how does an investor know whether a company is producing fake graphene or real graphene? Well, a lot of... Um, our quality control we've done through the National University of Singapore, who have done a very, very wide survey of the various graphene producers in the world, and they have uh, basically compared them all, and they have, um, they're not allowed to put names to them, I'm afraid, of, which would do a lot of good to things. Um, but I know that uh, Dr. Antonio Neto Castro gave a paper in Montreal about a year ago where he listed the top 20 graphene producers and what they are actually producing. And it's really only two or three of them that we're making graphene. Is there a question I can ask as an investor when I'm calling a graphene company and say, does your graphene have A, B, or C? Is there an intelligent question I can ask myself as an investor? Um, yes. You want to know how many layers of graphene they are actually producing on average. Okay. Right. Graphene is only defined as being 1 to 10 layers of graphite. Graphene is all. Okay. Once you get more than 10 layers, it's called graphite. And the properties are similar to graphite at that point. So you want as few layers as possible. You want to know what the purity of the graphene that they're producing is in terms of grade. And you've got to be really careful here because there's three different kinds of grade. There's a grade by mass, there's a grade by area, and there's a grade by particle count. What I have seen is a lot of companies give you the grade by particle count, which is meaningless because it could take a million particles of one size to be equivalent to one particle of a larger size. So what you're looking for is what the area grade is and what the mass grade is. And you're looking for as high as possible. And to be honest, a lot of the companies that produce graphene probably don't know themselves what they're producing because it's costly to check. You have to have, first of all, an optical microscope using the techniques that won the Nobel Prize for. But then you also have to have an atomic force microscope and what's called random spectrometry. And then you need all three to check what you've got. And that's an expensive process that most companies actually don't do. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining us again. As always, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much.